Hello and thanks for tuning in. I am that nerd dad, Joe Williamson, and this is that nerd dad podcast where we talk parenting, pop culture, and politics. How are you? I'm okay. Got a little tickle in my throat. I've been sick since uh, September. As soon as school started, I got sick. <laughs> little germ factories, little bastards. Uh, got a guest this week. Uh, I've been banging out the guests now. I'm, I'm, I'm on a roll right now. We're in a rhythm, which is nice. And uh, you may hear my son in the background. I'm just going to ignore him for a moment. Uh, but we got a guest this week. We got Randy King, owner and founder of 8020 Conflict Management Strategies. Uh, we talk de-escalation techniques. We talk about parenting. We talk about how you can be aware of your of your boundaries that you are setting with other individuals. It's a it's a fascinating conversation. Uh, I ask that you bear with me a little bit on this one. Connection was a little spotty. It it was you know, look it it, it was it was a uh, hit and miss sometimes. A bit of a delay. Some words kind of drop out. But what you will get from this call, conversation is one, Randy, if you're listening, you are hella charming, and two. Uh, you do good work and, uh, you definitely make others, um, I want to say better, but definitely more secure. And you definitely do are, 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 are in your right field. I can see the passion. And, uh, I talk about this a lot and you might hear me say this from time to time is, um, people can smell authenticity and Randy just oozes authenticity. So Randy, thanks for your time today. I'm going to throw the interview now. Um, but before I do, wherever you're watching or listening to this, please hit subscribe, follow. I greatly appreciate it. It's the only way this thing grows. Um, you want to leave me a comment or an emoji if you're a kid, if you're like a if you're like a young person who doesn't like to use words, leave me a smiley face so I know that you liked it. And um, thumbs up and five stars are always welcome too. <laughs> I have to say at the beginning of the show, this is most likely when you're still listening. If you haven't already fast forwarded to the interview with Randy, which I'll throw to now. Are you listening? Damn. Uh. Hello, everyone, and welcome today. As promised, I've got a guest. We've got Randy King uh, of RandyKingLive.com. What is RandyKingLive.com? It's 8020 Conflict Management Strategies and host of the Self-Defense from All Angles podcast. Randy, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, man. Happy to do it. Happy we were able to finally make this work. We have been trying to connect for <laughs> literally like three months. Yeah, it's that sounds about right. Three months. It's been and uh, it's been quite the ordeal. <laughs> but it's because you're a busy guy. So let let's start. What is and, 80, 20 conflict management? Go ahead. And how time zones work. So once was my, my fault, one hundred percent that because I forget how time zones work. And also, so I. <laughs> Yeah, we, we we had one scheduled, a little hiccup in the two hour difference that we got there. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so start with what is eighty twenty conflict management? What is that? What are we talking about? Awesome. So eighty twenty conflict management is my career to the point where I'm at now, and it is is in essence a proactive self defense skills, i.e., all the skills that you need to know to to avoid escalated threat as opposed to just going into the physical space. So we judgment because of the people that I work with. So I'm very lucky that I've worked with people from literally all walks of life, demographics, cultures. And while I used to be pride coach, like, oh, what if they do this, then you do that and, you know, choke defense and all that kind of sort of physical stuff through my training that the the proactive skills the soft skills were than the the actual physical skills okay so we're talking about now how does the 80 20 split happen like what are, what are we talking about there sure so uh it, it falls kind of under that pretty where uh 20 percent of your work is going to be the most 80 percent beneficial is the soft skills is the is the non-physical stuff and you're going to get 80% of your results. We like the 80-20 is it also shows that, that physical skills are still important. They're every other self-defense system or gym shows. Prove it. 
<laughs> Prove it, right? Well, no, and it, it's like this exactly, right? Like we, especially nowadays, we're working off of like, these online interactions. I can't physically prove anything to you right now. You're two hours away from me. Could you use, if you were an aggressive person, I could use de-escalation or I could use boundary setting in order to make sure that you interact with me the way I want to be interacted with. Okay, that, that, that point there, you interact with me the way I want. How does one go about setting that boundary, that, that expectation? That sounds like something my therapist would say. You need to set the boundaries <laughs> with people in your life yes. it, about how they're supposed to interact with you. So how does that, how does that work? It is very psychology. You talk about boundaries and we use a lot of psychological principles when we talk about boundaries. But it's like anything else. You have to start with yourself right so you need to know which ways you you interact with the world so the way we set it up is there's six different types of attention to and set for your boundary setting strategy so you have your physical boundaries that's how you do you like hugs for example i'm not a big hugger so my physical boundary says please me. then there's what we call sexual boundaries sexual boundaries are both obviously like do you like off-color jokes? Do you like people talking to you sexually? Uh, uh, playfully flirting, okay or not okay? Then we have... Oh, go ahead. No. Oh, oh sorry. I'm, sorry. Just, I'm playing with the... <laughs> so Then we have, have emotional boundaries. Emotional boundaries when you feel safe, what you need when you're going through a stressful situation. We have intellectual boundaries. That's your skills, your um, philosophy, that sort of stuff. We have if time boundaries, how you manage your time boundaries. So I would say, so we have a boundary setting course online. So of course, uh, take everything a product that is boundary setting. But with, with that thought process, uh, when it comes to self-defense and self-protection, boundaries are the number one indicator. When we look, work in a ton of study on this topic, I'm like a, a, a violence nerd, quote unquote. I, 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 and... <laughs> And sounds like a guy the, who watches the, too much John Wick. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, so, but when, <laughs> but when when we look at the actual numbers are dated on by predators, people who are, are, are selected, um, um, the people that are selected are physical selection. It's people with weak boundaries, right? So that's the first stage of your protect. Have this stranger danger myth in our head that oh, it's going to be somebody in the woods. Or some random person's gonna. If you look at the numbers. Eighty percent of victims knew that their attacker ahead of time. It's some somebody they were on a date with. It's somebody in their family, which is uncomfortable but true. Have to really take a look at, like, yeah, maybe your maybe your grandma has the men, right. It's not time for crab maga throat pop on Nana, right? We need other option skills. You know, so when you actually look at violence, like and like, look at the numbers. Look who is victimized. This wrist release choke isn't as effective as people like to think it is. So that's kind of where eighty twenty started was listening to the victims of violence, not to be like, no, listen, I have black belts. This is how it works, right? Actually, through these situations, and then developing a program that could benefit them. That's interesting. How does one kind of express their boundaries? Uh, you know, unless like, like how, how do I do it? Like outside of occasionally when I'm on the subway, for example, and I'm like, oh, I, I got a bad, yeah, my stranger danger is tickling. Uh, right. I change my demeanor and I kind of give off a, please, I, I'm not one to be bothered with uh, demeanor. Right. Outside of yeah. that, how does one kind of give off that vibe? So it depends on which stage of the relationship you're with this person. So if it's just a random stranger, like, right, show the person that you're not to be messed with, you know, take a strong posture, make good eye contact, are going to de-escalate somebody <laughs> on what we call the predatory side of things. Okay. So the person's looking for a fight and you make eye contact, you might actually escalate that. Situation. That's what I was about so, to say. I'm like, I'm terrified of making eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's the thing. 
thing, right? And this is, I think, the base I know about violence is violence isn't just like one flavor. There's different. So we like to simplify it into two separate categories. Category one we call social violence is your regular bro versus bro ego territory rule breaking. Do that here. That's my girl friend that's my drink etc that's just so uh, social violence, fighting so. over who has the bigger penis Ex exactly right it's exactly 100 right and then we have what's called uh predatory violence and predatory violence is your muggers your sexual assault your um, to gain some kind of resource from you they're using violence for secondary gain this is often a reaction to a perceived threat so uh somebody cuts you off in traffic that's a social <laughs> somebody somebody stalks you that that's a predatory violence situation because they're doing it for secondary you need to understand that there's two types of violence because the very frustrating thing, thing is ended on is the things that i tell you to do to stop predatory violence are the social violence and vice versa so if a predator selecting somebody weak and you make any blah 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 that's going to let the predator deselect you, but it might amp up, up some segment. So if someone's looking for a fight, don't make eye contact. If exactly. They are. Yeah. Got so, it. Exactly. But if somebody like, if somebody is looking for a potential victim, then not the first thing they're looking for, right? Oh, this person is too scared to make eye contact. This person. So the odds of that person not complying and or reporting afterwards are lower. And that's that's interesting, and I, I think we've all been there when we're at a, a social setting. Let's say let's say a bar, and a guy's getting a little too rowdy, and we know that guy's at yeah. But we're like, he's looking for conflict at this point. And I think people generally do have that kind of in, internal instinct, like, don't let's not look at him. Let's let's shy yeah. away from that individual for the time being. Um, exactly. We'll leave that to the bouncer to step in when this guy takes it off. Got it. And that's that's interesting. That's, that's where I started was as a bouncer. I did bouncing and close protection work for, for a very long time. That was the that was one of the first aha moments where, where we discovered this to be teaching everybody to de-escalate like a bouncer de-escalates. And that's not functional. For, it's only functional in certain situations, right? And so this is why we take such care in terms of violence and then giving tips and tricks on how how to de-escalate. So first you have to identify it, right? Uh, the example I use is if there's a fire in front of you and you had six of you and each one was different and you didn't know which one was water, just randomly throwing stuff might not make the situation. If I can identify, oh, this one is water, this is the best tactic, then that situation. Hey, you're a smart guy, Randy. By the way, I wanted to say this at the beginning. I forgot to say this at the beginning. Sure. Randy King yeah. Yeah. is a legendary name. It almost sounds fake. Fake. <laughs> it is my real actual name. Well, my name is it, Randall King. That's too formal for me. So I go by Randy. Yeah, no, Randy. You're talking to that nerd dad. Uh, people don't remember my name <laughs> afterwards because I just go by my... I'm like... Because I'm like, oh, my name is Joe. Everyone... Yeah. It's too forgettable. Right. You forget Joe. Blood but you jokes. remember talking to that nerd dad thing. So that, that right. you, Randy, but Randy King, it's just, it's such a great name. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to pivot a little bit here. Cause when I, look, I saw you on sure. Dean Mundell show and I was like, Oh, I, I, I dug your energy and vibe. And then you mentioned and kind of in passing that you have a wife and child. And my, yeah. when I reached out to you, I was like, I want to talk to you about the fact that do you use these techniques on your family? Are they aware of it? And do they call you on your shit when you call it, when you, when you use it? Ha. So, uh, called me on it, but now I'm better at it. So they don't. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yes, I have my second wife and I have a daughter from my first marriage. And, uh, I absolutely use these, I use these tactics, especially when it comes to communication. Like I, I firmly, what you know, it's too, you know, right. So social is better than smart. So if you can, if you can communicate better. It's going to put you in different positions that people who can't communicate in are not going to. Has been in active hardcore negotiations since she was three and a half. Uh, uh, she's like, convince me, go. 
and then she would negotiate <laughs> and see if she could stay up later. Sometimes she won and some. So yeah, I use these all, all the time, but honestly, because I've been doing this stuff for so long, ingrained, right? So we use a model in our conflict communication course, one of the big, big uh, and it's called the triune brain theory. And it's uh, old psychology and the model is actually an effective, sorry, the, the theory is garbage. It, it's not real, but the model they use for creating language around communication. And so it, it, it focuses on what's called, and it's monkey, human, lizard. So the theory states you have three separate brains in your head, connected system. But it, it, it's a great way to create um, a and the villain in the story is the monkey brain. That's your like ego, your, your social tri tribal stuff. And I used to just call people like, oh, you're in your monkey brain. But if you, if you didn't take my class, that makes no sense. If you don't understand the psychology, it makes, it makes no sense. So finding ways around it, but yes, initiating this information. Um, and I use it on my family and I still do currently to this day because the biggest key to de-escalation, I know that's what, what we're talking about, but as an example, one of the big is learning to de-escalate yourself first before trying to de-escalate others. So, oh no, well, I'm in my emotions. I've been my monkey brain. That has been hyper beneficial communication I've had ever since I've learned the course. You know what's funny, that, that idea of those um, the, the monkey brain, which I can totally see being a problem in social settings. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> So, feels like it feels like a, a loaded term, um, but I could super but, funny kind of side anecdote. So, so we're looking to do some like mar mar marketing merchandise for the program, and and we wanted some way to shape. And so we were like, oh, we should make like little bananas. And then we're like, nope, we can't, we can't give random people. That's probably not going to work so well. <laughs> nope, no bananas nope. and eggplants have really been ruined because of modern technology. Agree. <laughs> But, but but when I'm in my monkey brain, uh, I call it in our house. Oh, dad's having some big feelings. Dad's sure. having some big feelings. And dad, and in our house, dad will take a time out. Right. Good. And, and I try to I try to model that for the for the kids so that when they're having big feelings, they get used to like, oh shit, I'm I'm out of whack here. I gotta I gotta step away. Yeah. And I just need, I need five minutes to myself. And dad will go to his room, and I, I'll you know go sit in a quiet space for five minutes, calm down. So I'm not like yelling constantly. I'm not a huge believer in full on gentle parenting. It's a great idea in concept. I think it's hard to execute to perfection. Um, but sure. that idea of the monkey brain taking over, I, I, it makes sense to me. I get it. Well, well, and I think it's, and that's the thing, right? Is humans, humans do anything. We, we are not good improvisers. We're, <laughs> we're good with even one tiny plan. But I, they do the safety dance on airplanes, right? Like, here's the exits. Maybe the exits behind you. It's because it's been shown even one, even one repetition of thinking out of the plan, come up with something all by itself. So just knowing, like, big feelings is a great way to put it. Because you just, the, the anecdote you just shared with us gave us two of the big pieces we teach in the class, right? Number one was your feelings. And then number two, you set an emotional boundary. I need to be by myself for a couple of minutes. Boom, like a pro. Right? That's, these are the things we're trying to show people. But I'm going to clip that for my wife. <laughs> <laughs> clip that. See? <laughs> See? I'm doing it this guy's I'm fine. People pay him. <laughs> for the clip, I did not say you were fine. We just met. I don't know. <laughs> but this is the thing we're, we're noticing is that people... Strong boundaries in one of the areas tend to have weak boundaries in others, right? So let's say, so for a long time, my physical boundaries are pretty solid. I know how close I want you, but my, my time boundaries as, as an entrepreneur are trash. I don't, don't know when, sure, I'll overextend, and sure, I, can, I don't really need sleep, right? So there's these, and because they are a system, because they always, work together weakness in others right so if i if you're physically exhausted because you because you didn't set good time for you being with it enough to be like i need a minute because a 
big feelings become less. Of that makes sense. Is there is there something that your you you find your clients come to most frequently? Like, what's your most popular course? Okay, argue the because I teach such like ridiculous demographics. Like one of the show was I was over in Europe teaching, right? So uh, I I teach I teach police, I teach like white collar, then I teach like people who have traumatic backgrounds. Like, I've been, and then I'm off to like somewhere else, right? So I would say overarching their courses outside of like the physical class that are needed for like a police unit, for example, would be in the boundary setting course. Those two are, are, are super, super functional because I protection training is good life training, right? So if you learn how to say, you also learn how to say no to your boss at work when they're trying to make you stay later than you want to, right? Some overlap in this. And the same way, if you can de-escalate a dude with a knife on meth for six-year-old's tantrum, right? Like, there's going to be some overlap in these skill sets. The, the, the biggest sellers, for sure, are boundaries and communication because those two, if those locked down and you live a relatively normal life, like you're not paid to go towards danger physical altercation drop significantly that's amazing uh randy 20 yeah. minutes went by quick man uh i i appreciate your time today sir uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna throw some logos on the screen here we've got 80 20 conflict management strategies <laughs> check them out there yeah. randykinglive.com as well as the uh, the podcast yes. the self-defense from all angles uh what, what goes on during your podcast so this is my third podcast self-defense from all angles is uh, it's an entry level course for people that don't know the reason it's called from all angles is people survive violence with zero training. So the goal of this podcast is to show that it's not just expert help you learn how to protect yourself. There's lots of information out there. So on the show, I do interviewed like, uh, um, uh, a model, a sex worker, like people who are in have to defend themselves. So the first season is fully done now. It's out on all the places you can get. But the, the purpose of the show is entry level. Like we're going to teach you something about self-protection in a very uh, entry level podcast. It's not high level talk. No, but that's fantastic. I mean, because I, I look talking to you for twenty minutes, I feel smarter, um, and I think that <laughs> that's kind of yeah, absolutely. And I, I think that there's certainly an appeal there. So uh, check out Self Defense from All Angles with Randy King, available at all podcast areas. I don't know what you call. I it. greatly Platforms. appreciate it. Of course, yeah. Randy, you're a pleasure. Pleasure. <laughs> thank you for uh, thank you for doing this, my friend. No problem. Thank you. That's it. That's the show. Uh, I told you it was a good one. Randy is an awesome, awesome dude. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, it's uh, it's nice when you come across people like that, especially from like an organization in a situation I wasn't even that familiar with. And that's one of the reasons why I like podcasting. And one of the reasons why I like listening to podcasts is you hear stories and tales in a longer format than maybe what you're used to hearing. And um, it, it scratches that part of my brain that likes to learn. And uh, I hope you had fun with it today. I know I did. And we'll connect with Randy down the road. You know I like to bring people back. So Randy will come back, hopefully, as, you know, assuming he's not offended when he hears this, if he listens to it. I want to thank DeanBlundell.com, DeanBlundell.com, home of Canada's number one podcast network, including yours truly. A lot of great podcasts over there. A lot of great podcasts. Shout out to the Linz Report. Shout out to uh, Blackballed with James D. Fiore. Take this outside. It's all gold. It's all gold over there. I want to thank Mom Cave TV. MomCaveTV.com. It's got mom stuff and me. <laughs> Maybe you saw my interview with Jen a couple weeks ago. Um, she's a lovely person. And uh, my recent article, Five Things Dads Want Moms to Know is up on their website. So check that out as well. Finally, I've got merch just in time for the holidays. I've had merch all year, but now it's just in time for the holidays. 
Got uh, Zero Days Without a Dad Joke, World's Okayest Dad, Raised by Homer, Peter, Stan, and Bob, and That Nerd Dad, all available in a variety of colors and sizes. Get yours today. And just going to let you know, do, do a little teaser here. Uh, I do have a year-end special. It is a familiar guest. We are planning something fun. Do a little game show-esque type thing. So uh, that's coming as well. So that being said, be well, be safe, and uh, we'll talk next week. Thanks for listening. Damn.